So set this up for us, man. Where are we going? Well, we're going over to um, where I did a lot of my running, where I was uh, lived for a little while, where I OD'd on the ground and had paramedics revive me, resuscitate me, and um, where I lived in abandoned buildings and homeless on the streets. So we're going to go see. We've seen where I, I, I am. Now I've seen where I came from. And to know that uh, recovery is possible, especially for anyone. This hotel right here is known for um, drugs. A lot of crack smoking goes on right here. Budget in. It's just to stop and get high. A lot of these people around here are probably at night changing into a different crowd. Some people selling their ass. Um, people like me uh, out there stealing shit, robbing places. Uh, jump out boys, aka police, everywhere. You can't, um, you know, they get to know your face, you become a sort of like a unwanted celebrity around here. Kenwood, I lived here. My ex od here and had to be pulled out with an ambulance right here. I got busted at this corner, right here on this corner. I've lived over here at the Siesta Motel. Um, my mom OD'd at this Adobe Hacienda Motel. She OD'd there. really crazy she just got out of prison and she, she fucking went out okay now we're getting to this place was a funeral home before then it became a probation office if you can tell it looks like a funeral home and then it's now it's up for sale um, I used to take when I was on the streets I used to wash up at this CVS right here and um, in their bathroom I also used to uh, shoot dope in their bathroom um, pretty bad. What were you doing for money at that time? Um, shoplifting, stick ups, anything I had to do. Okay, so now there's a place they tore down. This is the super budget inn right here on the right. They tore this place down. This alley right here actually is really bad. I'm going to show it to you. And this lot right here was the biggest. Hotel crack infested, one of the biggest, I can't say it was the biggest. Here's actually a dealer's right here on the right. If you pan, you'll see that they're crack dealers. See, they're looking to make sure they're straight. They used to live right. I used to have to park my car right here. And actually, on this ground right here, I went out and had to be uh, resuscitated by an ambulance. Right there. Right there. Yeah, right here. Okay. Now down that way, down down that way, down, see this guy's on the gas can scam, doesn't work anymore. Down there is, um, I've chased people with knives over there. And here's another dealer over here. Look right here, probably another dealer. Um, I used to live there, that was my place right here. This was my place right there. That window was my place of residence. Uh, when I got evicted from there, I actually pitched a tent in those bushes right there. So I stayed there for a minute. In Hurricane Wilma, this building was abandoned right here. And I slept in. There was no windows on the place. It was destroyed inside. I slept in the, uh, in it a lot with my cat. A lot of crazy memories around here. This is one of the main places I like to stay in, this place right here. Oh no, there's people in there, I guess. But I'd stay right there. And there was no fence around this. There was AC units, but the AC units, it dips in right here where it goes through and the doors were off. And I'd stay right back there in the building. It was pretty, pretty bad. Um, it gave me a little shelter. I didn't have to stay, stay outside. Uh, a lot of people I see down here have to stay outside. Um, to elaborate on where I just showed you, I got kicked out of there when I was around. Shit, uh, it was probably it was like 12, it was a few years back, probably 27, 26 years old, 
and when they kicked me out, the landlord was evicted me, and he said, hey, um, you know, get out by tonight. So I did, but I didn't realize that he'd be upset if I pitched a tent on his front lawn. So I pitched a tent out there, and uh, the next day he came, he couldn't come knocking, he came scratching at the vinyl inside the tent. And I was like, what the fuck are you still doing here? And uh, I told him, well, he told me to get out of the house, so I'm out. But I had an extension cord running into my tent. Um, thought that was okay. Everything was going to be fine. And I was just fucking up. Fucking up bad. Uh, I've been jumped out on the cops all over the place. If I was to show you every place, you know, we wouldn't have enough time. Um, bad situations. This is definitely an area that I would not want to move back to. How many times were you arrested? Um, probably around felonies, probably around 20 something felonies. 21, 23 felonies. Um, not counting my misdemeanors and so on and so forth. So I've been arrested dozens and dozens of times. Um, the difference is now is uh, sometimes I'm asked to go back to my probation where I was on probation and speak to the kids and speak about life skills because now I have my own business and speak about, you know, how to not go back out and use, use drugs. And I'm going to bring you to a place on the other side before we go back. It's called the Entrada. And this place is known for its drugs. Um, see this, probably poor girl selling herself, maybe not, hopefully not. Um, the Entrada Motel right here, a really bad area, um, it's just known for drugs, known for being loaded with drugs, nothing but drugs. These guys all in here in the grind, up in the hustle, um, you'll see people, this is Young Circle, where we're going around now, uh, you see it goes around. And after you go around, see they have, they changed it, they make it, it made it look prettier than it was. This used to just be all flat at one time. Now they have waterfalls in there, little water fountains. So, uh, got a little bit better. The area hasn't though, that's for sure. What kind of felonies did you have? Most of them were drug possession or? Drug possession, grand thefts, um, anti-shoplifting device bags, um, no violent crimes. You know, all my violent crimes, I guess I never got caught for. You know, I was lucky with that, thank God. Um, but I, I've definitely uh, should be in prison, you know. And through the grace of my higher power, I'm not. And that right there, I, I lived there for a while using drugs. And also, right here at the Holiday. And I used to trade the owner of this video games just to let me stay there. A lot of drugs, crack smoke, and everything going on there. And also at the New Kent, right here. These are all places that's like $40, $50 a room. Um, get what you want. There's some dealers over there for you. Hopefully, some of them will get it someday. You know, I, I never thought I would. And um, just, just for a day, I am. Now, this is a place I've gotten kicked out of, a restaurant, for uh, nodding out. And used to drink methadone and go there and try to eat breakfast and um, not out and drop my coffee cup and smash it and I did that probably a five mile radius around this area so I fucked up a, uh, a lot of things I couldn't eat within five miles so I had to drive around and get breakfast and when you do methadone you definitely want to eat afterwards and I couldn't you know uh, because I'd nod out everywhere and drop everything on. Okay, now I'm gonna bring you by. Well, I used to drink 150 milligrams every day, methadone, since I was 18. I've been using strong probably for the last 17, 18 years, um, but dibble dab before that. Um, this is all people either doing a hustle or uh, people that have to live in this area because it's, you know, it's lo lower income. Um, this is called Dog Shit Park. Let me see. I, you know, it's funny because I, I, I see to see if my friends 
that I knew when I was using are still around. I can remember sitting here and talking to them for a while, but uh, they're probably, sad to say, died or got arrested or in prison. This used to be a police substation. I don't know what they do with it anymore. But, um, yeah, the Brickman building. They come back here and hide out. And our crazy asses would be right here just putting. You know, I'd sleep down here a lot on my own. Um, crazy ass shit. What made you turn to drugs in the first place? My mom was an addict. Uh, I, I, I started hanging around with all the crowds. And then I ended up just fucking up. Man, they took over my life and consumed it. Um, every day before 10 o'clock, or be maybe 10 to 11, I'm not sure. Um, every day, including holidays, every day, 365 days a year, I had to be at this clinic if I wanted to get dosed on my methadone. This is the, coming up with the, this place I'd pull in here. Broward Treatment Center, BTC. I'd run up in there, there's somebody in there now. You're fucking probably cleaning it. I'd run up in there and uh, get dosed on my methadone. Come out, get high. The grind was going on outside, who was using, who was partying. Afterwards, uh, a lot of people turn to, when they, the opiates get blocked, they turn to using um, crack and, and Xanax. And uh, it's nothing worse than being on Xanax because you don't remember, remember shit the next day. It, it, it's a real fucked up way to be. Um, all through here is just drugs on this, that side of the train tracks. Here, I'm going to show you. I'll go straight first. Um, when I first got down here, you know, my grandmother raised me. Um, not to be the type of person I turned out to be in the beginning. But that store and all that was part of the grind. Um, they sell drugs out front of it. Uh, cops have in this place like crazy they don't mess around she um, came down here and she she raised me and she she did the best she could what she had it wasn't much for us and then we ended up um, moving we were over here we lived over here for a while before she passed away when she passed away I just kept on going on my drug run and times 10 actually you know I, I got fucked up real bad over her her passing and um, I was still using like crazy and uh, she was really a big part of my life so it was fucked up real fucked up but you know uh, the crazy part is is uh, from where I'm at today from all the shit I, I wouldn't change anything if I knew I'd definitely get through it you know um, very have a lot of knowledge on what goes on now and how, how everything is perceived. <sighs> Most of all, like, uh, <laughs> God help my kids, because uh, they think they're going to pull over something to me and my fiance. Uh, they're going to know they're coming. Because we're definitely two people that have done it all. And uh, so if I don't know it, she'll definitely know it. And they're fucked, because we're not enablers. You know, families love to have their kids. Um, think not their kid, not their daughter, not my son, and pretty much what happens is uh, you love them, and I understand that you love them, but literally sometimes you can love them to death, and it's by enabling them, you know, tough love probably is the best thing you can do, in my case I really didn't have tough love because uh, my mom was an addict, so it was just survival, survival of the fittest. What kind of an addict was your mother? Uh, dr drug addict. There's not a typical type of drug. Her drug of choice was probably opiates, heroin. Heroin. Did a lot of prison. My whole life she was in prison and in and out of prison. I remember as a kid having to bring her weed. It was a mother, son, a mother, kid day they'd have. So they wouldn't search us, so I'd bring her weed in. But for some reason, like I was 14, 15, the, the weed would never make it from point A to point B because on the way I'd show my friends that were bringing me there and we'd smoke it up. So she, she'd be happy to see me until she realized I didn't have her weed. And then it was, you know, she, she was done with the visit. 
I don't blame it. And now looking back at it, I'd be pretty upset too if I had nothing to look forward to and want to weed. And you thought the weed was there and the weed wasn't there. So, I definitely understand that one. She's done a lot of uh, federal prisons, states prisons, a couple states. Um, she was my co defendant in a couple cases. Our relationship's totally different now. We're like mother, uh, sister, brother. Now we have like a mother son relationship. You know, which is really good because uh, I think that's all my grandmother wanted for the two of us. And now I know she's at least resting in peace knowing that she's got that. My grandmother, when we first got here, she got, she rented this place out for us. And uh, the drug using that went on here was ridiculous. It was just so much drug using. Your mother is in recovery now? No, she's not in recovery. She just, I don't know. I have really no clue what she does. She doesn't get high enough. We're here. Where we were turning this corner one day, I was taking a blast and I hit a lady on a bicycle. She flew over to my car, I got out and told her she was alright and ran her over to my house, which is right here. This is where my grandma passed away from. Right here. For rent. Wow, that's crazy. Um, holy shit, it's crazy that it's for rent. This is an old store. I'm gonna actually get a monster here. We can cut that for a minute until we come out. Yeah, you're a fucking idiot, man. What are you gonna do? Okay, y'all make it. We know, we know, we know. We're loving them all. Let them fucking call the call. Niggas fucking working drunk. Record that shit. Record that shit. Record that shit. Put that shit on YouTube. Look how these niggas work. Drunk as fuck. Record that shit. Hey, record that shit, dog. Yeah. Hey, record that shit. Another day in the life. I'm glad I left this shit. There are kittens everywhere. What kind of shit did you steal to make money? Uh, video games, pharmaceutical razors, Tylenols, DVD movies, uh, anything I pretty much had to. Anything to survive. And for some reason, they're probably looking for somebody over here, the cops. As you can see, they're everywhere. And they got their roads blocked off. It's on both sides? Yeah, it's on both sides. They're looking for somebody. Look at down there to the left, they got them. All the way over there. It's a typical day. Cops out big time today. Yeah, for the grace, go on. Oh, and they got the ghetto bird in the sky. Yeah, it's looking for whoever it is. Yeah, they're all over. I looked down the street, there's probably more. The perimeter's gonna flush the sky out, whatever the fuck it is. There's more down here. I got an app that does every police station fire and rescue in that area and what's going on with it and see there's more over here I'm trying to see if I can search can you record them is it legal hey I don't give a